Come on. Finally, I have a goddamn microphone. Anyway, hello everyone. My name is Cassandroff, and this is going to be my first commentary. Yay. Now, you may be wondering, who the fuck are we listening to? Well, I'm just another user on YouTube who was inspired to commentate after watching several other people do it. Specifically, Young Author Adam and Phoenix Angel Gal. Alright. Now that I have the introduction out of the way, like anyone doing a commentary, I need to choose an avatar. And my avatar will be... This crazy awesome hell raven girl named Utsuho Reuji. She's from Toho Project, in case you're wondering, which is a fairly obscure game series from Japan. Now that I have my avatar of choice, let's start the commentary, shall we? Oh dear. Already I can tell this will be bad. No dialogue and crappy music. Uh, allow me to put on something less bland and more pleasing to the ears. Hang on a second, I need to look through my library of music. Aha! This should do the trick. A world of your own, huh? When I think of having a world of your own, I think of something like the world of Narnia or Middle-earth, not Forks, Washington. I'd rather have an adventure with a god lion or the Fellowship of the Ring than be stalked by an emo sparkly wannabe vampire any day. Don't take my word for it, but aren't the films different from the movies? I wouldn't know because I wanted to save my brain cells. I beg to differ. I have little interest in necrophilia and bestiality. I have little interest in Edward and Jacob. I'll stick with other better characters, thank you very much. I have no comment on this. If you want to hear my opinion on the movies, go back a bit. Right, I'm gonna sum this up really quickly so I don't talk your ear off on this. Twilight is not romantic! It glorifies domestic abuse, necrophilia, zoophilia, pedophilia, child grooming, codependence, and basically says that if you don't have a lover or spouse, you are nothing! Being a survivor of 13 years of child abuse, this really, really, really pisses me off. Great message to send to kids, Meyer!
Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> what action? Seriously? What action? Is there a dance-off with sparkles or something? Meyer's writing style is so bad I couldn't even see if there was an action scene. If you want action, go check out Hellsing or something. That series has more action than you can shake a steak at. GLaDOS is a potato. Your argument is invalid. Seriously though, what's the point of that? Hair color preference has no point whatsoever when it comes to arguing something. It's like Guptill's apparent hair fetish. It's a stupid point! Is that so? I'd think that referencing a better couple that's been together through good and bad times would be better than referencing a dysfunctional fictional one. Are you going to give us reasons as to why she's a good writer? Unless you give reasons for an argument, it's gonna fall apart. I can easily give you proof as to why Maya is a lousy writer. She uses purple prose, she fails at writing characters, she doesn't do research. I could go on for a long time, people! No, love at first sight is not real. You can't have someone figure it out from the instant you see them. They could be hiding stuff. True love comes from bonding over time, not seeing someone that makes you horny and walking up to them and going, OMG, you're a smack son, let's make babies! If you tried that, you'd get your ass kicked. <laughs> Spilling, you're doing it wrong! But seriously, at best, their relationship is one of lust, not love. Did... did she just make an argument I agree with? HOLY SHIT! <sighs> I should've guessed. Great, we have a yaoi loving twice hard. Yes! Yes, it is wrong! I do not want to see a reanimated corpse having anal sex with a wolf! That shit is disgusting! Ugh! They are not werewolves. Werewolves shapeshift under the light of a full moon, are weak against silver, and fear wolfsbane. They do not first explode into gigantic wolves, nor do they have a telepathic connection to pack members, although I have seen some interpretations that give werewolves the ability to shapeshift when angry. But, they are also affected by the full moon. Also, real werewolves do not imprint on little kids. <laughs> oh, I've been waiting for this point to come up. You know why? This gives me a chance to really show off my knowledge of mythology. First of all, according to the original myths, vampires were not sexy looking men or women. They were reanimated corpses with brains. The myth was initially a means of explaining the natural process of decay in a human body after death. Eyewitnesses claim that when they opened up the caskets of bodies that were recently buried, they saw that the bodies appeared to have gained weight, had blood trickling from their mouths, their skin appeared to be flushed, and their hair and nails had grown. In reality, the weight gain was caused by bloat, a condition caused by gases building up inside a body as bacteria devour the dead tissue. The blood coming from the mouth, sometimes the nose as well, most likely from other orifices too, was not the blood of some poor sucker who got bit, but rather the remaining blood of the individual that died. The flushed skin is the result of skin sloughing off during decay, causing the layers underneath to be exposed. 
As for hair and teeth continuing to grow, that's a myth too. See, the skin covering the hair and nails recedes after death, which causes them to eventually fall out. The same thing may happen with teeth as well. The closest depiction modern fiction has for the original version of vampires can be found in F.W. Murnau's classic Nosferatu, starring Max Schenck as the titular character. However, in the Victorian era, vampires ended up getting the image of the sexy, mysterious men and women we tend to think of today. The penetration of fangs into flesh was used by writers of that era as a metaphor for sexual penetration. The image of sexy vampires was resurrected by Anne Rice and her Vampire Chronicle series and has continued to this day. Hell, even badass vampire characters such as Alucard from Helsing have a kind of sex appeal about them. However, if you were to compare Miss Rice to Mrs. Meyer, Rice is a superior author as she knew what rules she was breaking when she wrote the Vampire Chronicles. Her vampires have immortality, super strength, super speed, and the ability to recover from almost anything that would kill a human. However, sunlight can kill her vampires, save for those who are fortunate enough to drink the blood of a vampire who possesses immunity to sunlight. So far, the only ones I know of are those who must be kept. A pair of vampires who, according to the mythos of the universe, have the ability to resist sunlight and are the ones who allegedly started the vampire race in the Vampire Chronicles. Damn, that was a lot of text. And your point is... Seriously, what is the point of talking about how you annoy haters? So, there are teams in other fandoms. In Helsing, there's Team Alucard, Team Anderson, Team Helsing, Team Iscariot, and Team Millennium. We just don't call ourselves teams. We just consider ourselves to be fans. Dear God, those are terrifying! Also, what is the point of bringing up the merchandise as being a reason as to why it's perfect? My God! Your arguments are getting weaker and weaker! As I said before, it seems as Twit's arguments are getting weaker and weaker. Nightlight was mediocre at best, and Vampire Suck, I heard, got bad reviews. The only parody I found funny, and never saw, was a gay porn called Twinklight. The idea struck me as lulzy. I never got to Eclipse as I could not even start New Moon. Chances are, whatever action scenes were in it sucked donkey balls. <laughs> this is your worst argument of all. It's not a fact or a halfway decent point, it's just a stupid fangasm. Well, that's it for my first commentary. Feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, hell, even friend me if you want. If you want to give me constructive criticism, then go right ahead. I would greatly appreciate it, as it's the only way I'm going to learn. That's it for this commentary. This is, this is Cassandra telling you that it's not the size of the brain that counts. It's how you use it. See ya!